Good morning, everyone, and welcome. We are so honored that you have chosen to join us here in conversation about the medium, the art, the platform, the tool, the science, and the mode of discourse and self-expression that is podcasting. My name is Rebecca Berry, and I have the extraordinary pleasure of heading up this year's Humanities Podcast Network Symposium Planning Committee. I'm currently producer of the podcast Long Life Learning, former assistant producer of Democracy in Danger, and former sound engineer for Legal Knowledge Podcast. This coming Monday, I'm going to be starting a new job. I'll be with the University of Illinois Urbana-Champaign, working to ensure that scholars who are coming from high-risk countries have a safe place on our campus to continue their research and teaching. I'd like to take a minute to acknowledge the other committee members who are here who have put many hours of work and care into preparing for this year's symposium. I would love it if we could each introduce ourselves. Maybe let's do Kim and Marielle and then Nick. <coughs> yes. Hello, everyone. I'm Kim Fox. I teach at the American Kim University. Kim Fox, would you like to briefly unmute and introduce yourself to the group? Yes, <laughs> I had un unmuted myself. Can you not hear me? Totally fine. I'm happy to do an intro on your behalf. Mary Ellen, how about you go next? Rebecca, we can oh. hear Kim. We, we just can can't hear see Kim. Her. Oh, yeah. I, I thought apologize. I was. Keep going, Kim. I'll figure out okay. what's going on with my audio. Uh, I'm Kim Fox at the American University in Cairo in Egypt. I teach radio uh, and audio courses and introduction to podcasting. And I also have a podcast and I do a lot of academic research on podcasts as well. And I'm excited to be a part of the planning committee for the HPM annual symposium. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Kim. I apologize for the error there. Mary Ellen. Good morning, everyone. I'm Mary Ellen Cubitt. I'm from the University of Central Arkansas School of Communication. And I am the producer on the show. We have our 10 year anniversary called Arts and Letters Radio that focuses on humanities content in Arkansas and the Mid-South. And um, I'm really, really excited for the symposium. I just wanna thank everyone for joining us today. Hi, and uh, I'm Nick Montgomery, uh, and I uh, am a former philosopher turned sound designer. Um, and I uh, run my own little small sound studio called the Pramana Language Lab. Um, where I edit podcasts and make funny noises and uh, do some things. The next big project I've got coming up is actually a trip to Nepal to record uh, onomatopoeia um, for different people along the Annapurna Trail. Um, uh, and let's see. And I, uh, yeah, you can check out some podcasts called Play Quest uh, this one? Uh, if you yes. if you want to listen to a few other things like that. Um, and I've done a few other bits of voice work here and there. And I'm just I love being a part of HPN, and this has been a fantastic committee. They're really looking forward to a good conference. I'm very lucky to be working with all of you. Thank you all so much. And there's one more member of our committee who wouldn't wasn't able to be here today, but if you learned about the symposium via Instagram, it was probably from him. Our fifth committee member is Dan Dissinger, who is an associate professor of writing at the University of Southern California, a poet and creator and host of the Writing Remix podcast and the Nostalgia Test podcast. So I want to share with you a story that I learned recently about the origins of the Humanities Podcast Network, because I think it demonstrates the spirit of searching for answers and searching for change that many of us might be bringing to the symposium with us today. The HPN was born in January 2021 at the Modern Language Association, one of the biggest, most established, most prestigious humanities conferences here in the US. And there was this one panel of scholars and professors who made the case for podcasting as a literary genre, a fairly radical position at the time. They continued the conversation into happy hour. Now, if you're following the timeline, I know that what you're thinking and don't worry, it was on Zoom. They picked up a few more voices and out of that, this network of audio creatives in higher education was born. These were individuals who recognized that the wealth of stories and new voices bursting onto the podcasting scene didn't make the medium too crowded or too commonplace for study. Rather, they recognized it was essential to be fluent in a narrative language which is shaping public discourse. It is imperative to examine with the same care and rigor the color and shape of a voice as it is to analyze the craft and form of a poem. The founders of the HPN knew podcasting to be an alternative space for connection and collaboration. 
It is a site of experimentation, of rebellion, of shift in modality, which permits a new examination of formerly held boundaries on what scholarship and proper storytelling can look like. And of course, as with every great group born out of a creative collective spirit and dream, this inciting incident has merely been the starting point for an organization with far reaching branches. Last year, educators in the HPN created a manual for teaching students how to podcast. Earlier this year, a group of HPN members taught a three hour course in humanities podcasting with students at UC Santa Barbara. And underway now is a highly anticipated and ambitious project, the comprehensive the comprehensive um, Paul Grave Handbook of Humanities podcasting, which will feature more than 60 contributors. And finally, this is now our fourth HPN symposium. And one of the reasons we've kept this event virtual is to keep the door open to our deeply enthusiastic and ever-growing circle of global podcasters. This year, we're very excited to welcome podcast creatives, not just from the US and Canada, but also Brazil, Egypt, Germany, Greece, Nigeria, the Netherlands, New Zealand, India, Japan, and the UK. One of the beauties of podcasting, and I hope you'll agree, is that it's porous. It permeates like sound waves all other stories and scholarship that exist today. It starts from the compass point of sound, it shape shifts into the written word, into dialogue, into visual and three-dimensional spaces and networks. For those of you who haven't yet worked with spectral analysis and sound, think of the waveform editor in Adobe Audition, this is for me another dimension of beauty from which to admire all forms of language and the sheer miracle that is the human communication through sound. The moment that you see hazy purples, saturated golds, sharp red lines, and stretches of velvety black that coalesce into meaning, unique as a fingerprint to each of us, you know that audio is as rich and full and meaningful as anything we can glean from a person by looking at them. There's another story I want to share that gets at the heart of the question underlying this year's symposium. To what extent are there, or could there ever be, best practices as applied to podcasting? Our team first started discussing this concept this past spring. I was expressing some mild consternation about the fact that two of the institutions I've worked at have radically different approaches when it comes to faculty podcasts. One institution hired university community members from a wide range of career stages and positions of power. We had faculty, postdocs, graduate students, and undergraduates on our staff. We were led by somebody with radio experience who prioritized strong research, to the point questions and healthy debate between all of our voices in order to make the show stronger. It was messy behind the scenes, pristine upon publication. At the other institution, a professor would notify marketing and communications when they wanted to have a podcast. They recorded with professional media services. The show was edited by a third party freelance podcaster and each episode ends with a quick sign off and no credits. I had to find this producer's personal website before I realized that she was the one making these podcasts. And this sparked discussion within the HPN about credit. There was a unanimous feeling that it is best practice to acknowledge those whose labor goes into the making of a podcast, if not the audio proper, that at least in the show notes or on the podcast website. And this started a larger discussion. Were there other commonly understood but largely unspoken tenets of good podcasting that we could all agree upon and that form the basis of a document containing guidelines in the vein of, say, the Society of Professional Journalists Code of Ethics? The short answer is no. We couldn't find any more universally agreed upon principles. As with so many things in life, there were always exceptions to the rule or an argument in favor of artistic experimentation or the concern that making one guideline paramount risked um, compromising another. And interestingly, the dis disagreement started to fall along two primary modes of thought. And the first says that podcasting has a particular set of ethical responsibilities. And the second says that podcasting needs to remain the haven of revolutionaries. Now, if you're more inclined to agree with the first statement, you might be thinking of the fact that, for instance, Podcasting is not a medium readily accessible to members of the public who are deaf or hard of hearing. They also might be difficult to follow for someone still learning the language. Therefore, you might argue it is the basic obligation of a podcaster for accessibility purposes to generate and provide a transcript to accompany their episodes. If you feel more affinity for the revolutionary argument, you might be thinking fair point, that's an important consideration, but transcripts often aren't free and doing it yourself takes a lot of time. 
who's paying for this and who's doing the extra labor? If you're a student, if you're an independent artist, if you're someone who's just starting out, are there some individuals who might be deterred from making a podcast in the first place if they knew there was a higher barrier to entry, possibly tied to cost? Then again, there's an argument to be made that there are simply too many podcasts out there, approximately 4.4 million at the latest count. Although if you count by the number that are have published in the last 90 days, it goes down to about a half a million, but still. And this makes marketing conditions and the opportunities to make money as a full-time podcaster gradually less viable. There's also an argument to be made that there are too many low quality podcasts out there. While shows with poor quality sound and lack of editing are simply grating on the ear, it's the poorly researched or downright fallacious ones that truly pose a danger. And in this context, supporting guidelines as a mean of promoting ethical podcasting is a question of quality and accuracy. Meanwhile, podcasting as a revolution suggests that freedom and the ability for anyone to create a podcast is essential. Podcasting, particularly in academia, is the realm of those who challenge the status quo, who disrupts traditional norms, who interrogate and play with and break through conventional boundaries. You can no more say with definitive confidence what constitutes the form and content of a podcast than you can dictate the form and content of what makes a poem or a song. All of this you're going to hear in the undercurrent or out in the open in the course of this weekend. We have some brilliant presenters zooming in from 26 different cities and six countries. We're going to speak to you about podcasting as artistry and craft, as narrative, as political action, as entertainment, as education. You'll also hear from podcasters who offer guidance from their own experience of labor sharing, establishing networks within their, within their communities, nurturing marginalized voices, and simply making sense of what it means to call yourself a podcaster in a market that often demands would be podcasters and. Podcasters and scholars, podcasters and marketers, podcasters and ethicists, podcasters and revolutionaries. The reason we chose this theme for the 2024 HPN Symposium is precisely because this conversation sparked such debate between us. What we share in common is the love of podcasts as sound plus connection. For some people, the most life-changing, beautiful sound they have ever heard might be an instrument or applause. I'm willing to bet that for many of us, it was a story. And so with your help, we want to try again. With the expertise of podcasters who join us today, whether you're an editor, producer, host, journalist, researcher, voice actor, you have the lived experience which informs you what you consider best practices in your own work and which can help us consider the degree to which there are patterns, consistencies, and concerns that move us closer to an understanding of whether the idea of best practices in podcasting is a concept long overdue or better left untouched. So at this time, we're gonna spend the remaining 13 minutes or so of this welcome address attempting to break the ice and launch into some meaningful conversations. I have prepared a six question Mentimeter poll for us. We're gonna take the open-ended answers from the final questions of the poll, transfer them into a Google doc, which will be shared with everybody who's registered for the symposium. This doc is gonna be available throughout the rest of the weekend for additions, suggestions, and comments until the close of the symposium tomorrow afternoon. So we encourage you once this document is made, and that'll be at the latest by noon this afternoon, to visit the doc between sessions or whenever the spirit moves you to add your ideas and suggestions about your thoughts on best practices in the context of podcasting. So without further ado, let me share with you all the Mentimeter code and we can begin to share. Okay. Perfect. I'm going to drop this in the chat very quickly. Hmm. One moment, please. Okay, perfect. All right, kindly click on the link in the chat. And I will be able to see when we have everyone in our Mentimeter. Perfect. 
perfect. We have people responding to our very first question, which is about how long you have been a podcaster. And my fellow committee members, if we have people who join from now on, if you could just copy and paste that Mentimeter um, link and send it to anybody who comes in after this point, that would be wonderful. Thank you. All right. I think it's interesting and not terribly surprising that we have a lot of people who have joined the world of podcasting since approximately the era of the pandemic. It's wonderful to see people who've been involved for more than 10 years. Podcasting as a medium is technically um, more than 20, about 20 years old. The first so-called podcast came online in about 2004. It's so exciting to see a bunch of people who are brand new to the medium as well. Fabulous. I see we have 36 people logged in here. I think that's going to get us some fabulous answers. Next slide. I would describe myself as a blank podcaster. You're able to submit up to five answers, but please notice you got to do them all at once. So if you have multiple things you'd like to say, type them in and hit enter. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Very nice. Oh, we got somebody who submitted multiple at once. Very nice. Okay. I like that what I'm seeing are a lot of words that make me think of engagement. There are people who clearly want to um, communicate with the public with their podcasts, people who want it to be fun and engaging, um, facilitating education and learning. Excellent. Hmm. We have a couple of people that are describing the geographic locations of their podcasting, others who are using adjectives to describe what they strive for as a podcaster. Very nice. Let me give a couple more seconds here to see if we can get a few more answers in. <laughs> I also appreciate the self-deprecating answers like a reluctant podcaster, a novice podcaster. That's what the HPN Symposium is here for. It's here for everyone. Beautiful. And we've got a few people who have used this as an opportunity to say sort of in what professional space does podcasting fit for them? Maybe they're a freelancer. Maybe they're just an editor. Maybe they are in the world of art. Excellent. Next slide. All right, we're getting into some of the more long answer questions here. And this is one that I will copy and paste into our Google Doc for further thought. What are the biggest problems or challenges facing humanities podcasters today? You should be able to submit more than one answer. So if you'd like to uh, make it a bit of a phrase, or if you'd like to elaborate upon your idea, there should be a short number of um, uh, characters allowed to you, and then you should be able to submit multiple answers as well. Okay, I'm seeing multiple responses that hint at issues with making sure that you can get paid for your work. And I'm seeing that sort of breaking through and making your work discoverable to a large number of people is something on people's minds as well. Mm. We have multiple times on the board. Oh, I think this is interesting. Challenges from visual media. I assume that has to do with competition from visual media. Fun funding on a long-term basis, not just acquiring money to launch a podcast, but to sustain it going forward. Listener fatigue. And I imagine that also includes the sheer number of podcasts that you have before you as an option. Institutional support. Interesting. I see a connection between university support and unionization. It seems there's a concern about people's jobs and their rights being protected as podcasters. Mm. Okay. 
there are some people who are looking for more opportunities to connect with fellow podcasters and feel like there's a cohesive group of us. Okay. I, I'm seeing the one that says there's competition with what counts as academic um, academic content. Good, bad algorithms is something I think about as a lot as well. I noticed something that I mentioned in my speech, which was uh, misinformation. Great, thank you so much. Now, this is getting at the heart of in what context do you apply best practices to your own life? What are some guiding principles you live by in your own podcasting? And I just want you to think of this on a personal level. If you are an editor or a host or a researcher or a marketer, what are some principles that guide the decisions you're making as a podcaster? Okay. So <laughs> the issue that inspired this year's uh, symposium, giving credit to all work that is done on a podcast. Mm. Making sure that podcasting as a very human led source is something relatable. Accuracy, ensuring that the things, the facts we're sharing are um, evidence-based. Okay. Good, I'm seeing some people compare podcasting to journalism practice. I'm seeing others who are saying it needs to prioritize the humanities or the human centered focus. Good storytelling, storytelling that matches what you would wanna to listen to yourself. Hmm. I'm curious about this phrase, future proofing content. Uh, in another context, I've heard that described as evergreen content, okay? Resisting the urge to over edit. Mm. Finding interesting information niches makes me think about, um, you know, finding the untold stories or the places that podcasters haven't gone yet. Archives, I do think about podcasting in the context of creating a very rapidly expanding archive and the sheer number of voices that are going into it. <laughs> resisting the urge to make your podcast too long, right? Amplifying the voices and stories of others who need a platform to speak. Content over frills. Good. We'll see if there's just a couple more coming in. Guiding principles you live by in your own podcasting. Radical inclusivity, working with diverse collaborators. Mm -hmm. Strong through line of the importance of storytelling. Mm. Don't copy what already exists and don't compare yourself to others. Oh, I really love this one. So I'm just gonna read it out loud and then we'll move on to the next. Challenging the ideal of the scholar as solitary genius. Our best thinking happens in community. And that actually pairs quite well with the other one that's just popped up. Not knowing if anyone is listening uh, suggests that there are times that being a podcaster can feel quite lonely, putting your work out into the universe and not sure if it's entering a void or if it's being heard and being swirled around um, among various people who are listening and discussing it. Completely understand. Fabulous. Two more. Next one's a quick one. A best practices guide for podcasting would be most useful to me personally in the context of, and this question is a ranking. You should click and drag to put them in the order of what's true for you. And once you have put them all in order, you should be able to hit enter. Okay. Hmm. Fabulous. Interesting. All right. With 22 answers in, community engagement is coming out on top, but accessibility and outreach is just behind. 
And then on the lower end, we have labor and teamwork, recording and editing, growth and monetization. Oh, and accessibility and outreach has taken the top spot. I'm going to click to the next one because I do want to gather some information. And this will be our final question. What questions and concerns do you have when considering the creation of a set of best practices guidelines for podcasting? So contemplating the concept of what if there was a list that was best practices for podcasters, what questions would you have about that list or what concerns would you have about trying to create guidelines? Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. All right. So the initial answers that are coming in express a little bit of concern about, is there any chance that such a list would limit freedoms? Is there any chance that it would discourage or limit the ability to be diverse and inclusive? There are questions about making sure that if we are trying to establish high quality podcasts, how do we have a workflow for peer review and other forms of review? What if some of the guidelines don't fit all of the podcasts that they're trying to address? Okay, making sure it's globally um, aware, making sure it's sustainable, good. Okay, interesting. Hmm. We have some answers here that are about um, making sure that podcasting is accessible for all. Great. Thank you so much. Okay, at this time, I'm going to exit out of Menti. You should be able to continue answering that last question a little bit longer if you'd like. At this time, we are ready for our first two sessions to begin. If you are here for session one, best practices for growth, monetization, and amplifying diverse voices, please stay right here on the Zoom. If you are looking for session two, best practices for podcasting as artistry and craft, that is going to be on a different Zoom that was sent to your Eventbrite. And um, in fact, does anybody have that handy that they could drop in the chat if there's anybody here going to that one? No. The okay, I can the second it. one, yes. Correct. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you, John Barber. If you are heading to Artistry and Craft, thank you so much for being here. It's wonderful to see you all. I'll see you for the rest of the weekend. Everybody who's staying here for session one, you are in the right place. Thank you all very much. It's been wonderful to address you.